broadcaster and GP, Dr. Renee Hodenkamp is still with me. And also joining me is NHS doctor and cancer research fellow, Dr. Frankie Jackson Spence. Good afternoon, Frankie. Good afternoon, thanks for having me on. No problem at all. First of all, how does this jab work? Yeah, it's so exciting. We've actually been using these for a while in clinical trials and I'm working myself on the kidney and bladder one. Essentially, what it does is when you have a cancer, we take a amount of tissue from that cancer called a biopsy and they create this vaccine that uses your own cancer-specific mutations, which we then deliver into the body and your body starts to produce those cancer proteins and present them to your immune cells to try and harness your immune system to target the cancer cells. So if you think that, you know, if you were infected with the flu virus, your immune system kicks into action, recognizes that virus as foreign and fights it. Well, your immune system is very clever and it has the potential to do that to cancer cells. So it's trying to, just like normal vaccines work, direct your immune system against your own cancer cells. So when people have uh, chemotherapy, that attacks all the cells good and and bad but but this will just simply target the cancerous ones is that right so you're very correct in saying that so chemotherapy is a more generic treatment so it targets rapidly dividing cells and that also means it targets your own tissue if you think of the common side effects of chemotherapy things like nausea and vomiting or hair loss that's because it's also targeting things like your hair follicles and your gut lining and it results in those side effects Whereas this vaccine is being given in combination with a drug called immune therapy, and that's working to direct your own immune cells against the cancer. So it's supposed to be more targeted. Of course, this is a clinical trial, so we're mainly trying to see if it's safe and tolerated by patients. But we are also wanting to see if it has efficacy in shrinking the tumour and treating the cancer as well. OK, so what stage of testing is this drug in currently? So this is a randomised clinical trial, so it's a kind of high level of evidence, um, but it is still in the clinical trial phase. So only people who are enrolled in this clinical trial, so with the specific cancer types that we've mentioned, have access to this drug. We will check that it's safe and look at the efficacy as well. And if the results are positive, then it will be a number of years before this is brought into practice for, um, for general patients on the NHS. Um, at the moment, do we know if there are any side effects, both good or bad, from this, uh, this injection? So the side effects from all the treatments that we give, and of course it's always a risk versus benefit kind of ratio that we work out for each patient individually. The side effects from immune therapy, um, which are very similar to when you give the vaccine, it's supposed to be enhancing the effects of the immune therapy, are fatigue is one of them. Um, it can sometimes also attack your own body similar to the chemotherapy and that can result in things like skin rashes change in bowel habits inflammation of things like your kidney and liver that you'd see on a blood test however we're still in the early phases so we don't actually know um if the side effect profile is going to be too different from that but patients will be closely monitored actually patients tend to tolerate immune therapy quite well. Um, for many patients, they tolerate it better than chemo. And I've worked on a cancer vaccine trial actually pre-pandemic, and patients didn't really have any extra side effects from the cancer vaccine. OK. Now, obviously, you're still trialling this, but realistically, time-wise, what do you think? Could we see this rolled out nationwide this year? Or are we talking years down the road? It's years down the road. Sometimes if, first of all, we have to recruit patients. So we, at my centre, we're only just opening this trial. We haven't recruited a patient yet. So the recruitment period tends to be about a year. And then we have to follow up the patients. So when it comes to cancer, we need to have events. So patients, you know, we need to follow them up to know whether it's worked at increasing their survival and, and shrinking their cancer. So it's a couple of years for the trial to be conducted. And then if the results are really positive, there's sometimes accelerated access to get it into the NHS standard of care pathways. But usually it's a number of years, more like three to five years between uh, running these trials. That being said, this is a really exciting avenue of treatment and, you know, it's worth doing and worth holding out for because it could really revolutionise cancer care. Right. Dr. Dr. Frankie, thank you for your time and do keep up the good work. Thank you. Dr. Renee, 
as far as I know, look, it's, it's maybe the viewers don't know this, but you and I are mates outside of this <laughs> studio. To me, you're you're my one of my few friends that is a bit of a skeptic when it comes to any kind of vaccine. No, not any kind of vaccine, not at all. So my daughter has had every vaccine that there is. So I'm okay. not. No, 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 I'm not. I'm very skeptical. Or my jury is out on mRNA vaccines. OK. And I think I was quite happy when she said this was years down the line, because I think we need to know what this unusual technology, which goes into our cells mm. and manages to tell our DNA cells to make something that they would never have normally made, I want to see what the long-term effects of that are. There are professors of oncology right now as we speak calling for mRNA vaccines to be banned. What's the be risk with... Uh... Because they say that they are seeing other cancers rear their head and that there is, it's a technology that they're not happy with. Now, COVID, obviously, because of the vaccines, has allowed the MRA technology, which has been trying to get into mainstream for quite some time, mm -hmm. to do just that. And there's a lot of money in this. We must never forget it's there is the a cash. lot of money in this. And look, I'm, I'm torn on this particular one for melanoma, and I discussed this with my other half this morning, because we're both doctors, and I said, oh, you know, it's mRNA, and he said, and I think he had a very valid point, it's melanoma. It's a nasty cancer. It's one that's got a high chance of coming back and killing you. I'd take my chances. And so it is this risk-benefit, but I do want to see good trials that tell us that the technology itself is safe. And that's where I am on it. So, no, I'm not anti-vaccine. I was anti the COVID vaccine for people who didn't need it. Absolutely. Some like people kids. need, yeah, kids, yeah. you know, and about informed consent. You yeah. must always know the good stuff and the bad stuff and be allowed to make up your own mind. Um, would this procedure be of great cost to the NHS? Of course, it's of years course. down the line, but yeah. How, massive. Massive cost. And this is individualised to each patient. So each patient, they take their cancer and make a vaccine for them. It's going to be huge. So is it likely this would be something that the NHS then wouldn't I be able think, to do? Look, it, it all comes down to NICE and the MIHRA, and they have a limit on how much it costs to save a life. Mm -hmm. um, it used to be about 30,000 um, for every life year gain. So, you know, that went out the window in COVID, by the way. It right. cost an awful lot more than that. Yeah. So I don't know. But I think this, at JJ, is where we need honest conversations with the public to say, look, we've got this really exciting but expensive treatment over here. What do you want to lose? Yeah. We can't just keep adding to so this. We can lose. We can lose um, boob reductions and yeah. boob increases on the NHS. We can lose Brazilian butt lifts because people yeah. feel, oh, I don't know about that. No, you see, I, so I think in an ideal world, I've got, and I am a champion of women to have children. I yeah. think it's the most beautiful thing ever. We said we need it. We need more we kids. We need it, we do. But I am, I think in the scope of things, if we had le endless money, of course we would do things like IVF. But when we don't, what's what, more important, cancer or IVF? Oh, cancer, absolutely. I wouldn't have a Zempic on, no, on NHS. Absolutely not. Nor I think would that's I. ridiculous. Anyway.